This time it's a transmission fluid and filter service on a 2014 Toyota RAV4. It's got the four cylinder engine. Let's go. Okay, so to start this project correctly, I need to take off this splash shield here. Okay, there's several 10 millimeter bolts and there's also several plastic clips. Let me see if I can find all these plastic clips I can show you. All right, here's one of the plastic clips right there. So the way to do these, you can get a flat blade underneath the side a little bit and start it popping. Then you can take a panel tool like this, pop the rest of the way out. <clears throat> so you want to find all those clips and all those 10 millimeters and drop this whole splash shield. Now in the front driver's side wheel well, front left wheel well, you want to pull off this plastic panel here. It's got the same kind of clips as we saw underneath. Okay, so when it's time, this is gonna be our fill plug. Now we have access to everything we need to have access to. You see the transmission pan here. I'm gonna change the filter and the fluid, so I'm pulling the pan down. If you don't wanna change the filter, leave the pan right on. Okay, so under here, you got this drain plug. This is six millimeter Allen. I'm gonna pull that and get it draining. Okay, so right now, with just that drain plug out, we're just getting a little bit of a trickle. The reason for that is there's a standpipe up inside there, a plastic standpipe that actually helps you set the level. So what we gotta do now is we're gonna put the same socket deeper into that opening. And we're gonna find that uh, standpipe because the center of the standpipe is also a six millimeter there we go i just felt it seat in so now i'm going to turn it gently it's barely uh it's barely even tight so i'm going to actually hold on and do it with my fingers here in a second yeah so i can actually just get that fit back in there and i can twist this plastic tube out with my fingers and you can already see more fluid starting to flow out it takes very light pressure to get this to come out okay so this is what's up inside the transmission. It's a hollow tube. That's how we actually set the level later. Okay, now so for my project, since I wanna get this pan off and change the filter, I'm gonna take all these 10 millimeter bolts off around the outside of this pan. Uh, these couple back here, you might wanna get a, uh, a universal joint to get to those. Those are kinda like tucked under this part of the front subframe a little bit. But I'm gonna pull all those off and uh, we'll continue. Okay, so with the pan off, this is what you're looking at. This is the lower guts of the transmission. This is your filter. I'm replacing it. Not everybody replaces their filter. Um, there's a 10 mil right here. That holds it in. And one way back here that holds it in, okay? So this is what the filter looks like straight on. That's a new filter. Okay. This new one has a paper element. This car's got about 120,000 on it. And like I said, not everybody's going to change out the filter. I figure if I'm going to do it, put a fresh filter in it, especially 120. You know, after this, I might just change the fluid. But uh, at least I know now uh, it's got a fresh filter in it. So it's very simple. Two 10 mils. This will pop down. New one gets installed the 10 mils. I'm going to go ahead and clean up these edges a little bit, just wipe them off. Um, maybe a very light sandpaper or a scraper just to clean up these edges a little bit. Uh, there is a rubber gasket that came with this kit and that's going to go on also. Um, it was a dry gasket. There was no RTV or anything on it. So that's exactly how I'll reinstall it. Uh, when I reinstall it, we're just going to twist these 10, 10 millimeter bolts back up in here just finger tight we're gonna cross the pan repeatedly okay and just take our time it's a, there's a lot of bolts a lot of surface area there you don't want to warp the pan uh, and you want to pr apply even pressure all around the gasket i will find and post the final torque numbers but uh you won't need those until you like i said you just take your time going around getting it snugged up finger basically finger tight until they're all finger tight evenly all the way around it just takes time that's one of the drawbacks of dropping the pan is it's tedious to tighten it up again okay i pulled the old filter out uh the o-ring from the old filter stuck stayed in there 
you got to watch out. The new filter does have a rubber O-ring on it also. So you don't want to double up those O-rings. So make sure you just got the one O-ring. So we'll line that up with the hole. Give it a firm push. I felt it click in. Twist it a little so we can line up these holes. And we'll reinstall those 10 mils. Okay, so this is one of the reasons you might want to drop the pan, change this filter out. So there's a little bit of fluid still left in this pan. And you see how dark uh, this is. This spot here, uh, you see you've got multiple little magnets here. That's a magnet. There's one. There's one. Those magnets are actually flat. They look rippled, but they're actually flat. The ripples are very fine metal shavings I'm picking up off the magnets. So when I pull off a pan, I like to clean these magnets off. I like to clean all of it off, actually. Um, these magnets actually will move. They have little uh, like spots they're supposed to be. See these little ridges? That's where the magnet lives. But you can move it around. Um, so I'm going to wipe off the shavings off these magnets, clean the inside of this pan off real good, make sure that there's nothing left in here, and uh, that way these magnets can pick up anything else in the future. Because right now, the way those are mounted up like that, I have a feeling that those magnets may have been retaining as almost as much as they can. That might not be true, but that's the impression that I get once the flakes start to mount up like that. So we're going to clean that out, and uh, then I'll show you how this, this tube here works. This is the, the underside of this is the drain plug that we had, right? And then we pulled out the other... Uh, plastic center of the drain plug, the standpipe tube. And so actually when you drop this pan, you still have this much fluid in the pan. Okay. So when I drop this, you have to, you have to be careful and make sure you have your drain pan right there. Here it is all cleaned up. And now let's look at this tube we took out earlier. So if I feed this back underneath, like we were back underneath the car and thread this up here, you can see how high that tube goes. So that's the full height of the tube. It is higher than the lip of the pan, okay? So this is why you'll see the fill procedure. The fill procedure is gonna be making sure the transmission fluid is at the proper temperature, and then removing just this drain plug, right? From there. Because what's going to happen is when it's at the correct temperature, any excess fluid is going to come over the top of this pipe and fall out of the transmission, drain out of the transmission. And then once it's done doing that, then we'll know at the proper temperature, the transmission has the correct amount of fluid in it. So that's how this whole system works. I've seen a lot of videos that show part of this, but they don't show the inside guts that tell you why this works the way it does. Well, this is why. So hopefully this gives you a little more understanding of how the system works. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to get the rubber gasket laid around here, and I'm going to start threading the uh, 10 millimeter bolts up through it so I can capture the gasket. So the gasket stays um, uh, like lined up uh, properly. Okay, so now it's time to get this transmission refilled. So this is the fluid that I got out. It's pretty dark. It does have a red tint to it. Um, car's got about 120,000 on it. Other people will measure this different ways. Some people will get a uh, like a resin mixing bucket or a paint mixing bucket from the paint supply store that already has the marks on it to show you the quartz. I didn't have one of those, so I improvised. So I took this regular jug from in the house and I used a measuring cup and I put water in at half quart increments okay so I know what this will actually read according to those measuring cups obviously then I dumped it out and now I'm just going to dump this into there find out what it reads I think we're somewhere around three and a half quarts um maybe a little less um so that's going to end up being what we start putting the transmission uh next
So that looks to be pretty close to three and one quarter quarts. So uh, that's what I'll start with putting in. Now, I've probably lost a little bit that's sticking to this jug. I probably have a little bit that's still sticking to the drain pan, maybe a little spillage. So we may end up in the end closer to three and a half when we're all done. But right now we'll start with three and a quarter because that's the best info I have and we'll go from there. Once again, this is our fill plug. This is 24 millimeter plug. I've already loosened it up, so I'm gonna remove that out of the way. That's where we're gonna be filling transistor fluid back in. Now, just like before, there's different options to fill this. Uh, some people like to use a funnel out here with a really long straw that goes down into there. For me, that's too many things to hold at once. So <clears throat> we've got our Dexron 6, which is what is spec'd out for this car. And I like to use this type of uh, a transfer pump or like a large syringe, you might call it. So I'll show you how that goes. So I can draw up a full syringe of fluid. Get that tube in the transmission and then feed it in. So as I'm doing this, I'm checking the side of the, the fluid bottle to see how much I'm drawing out. To make sure I don't go over the three and a quarter that we're trying to do. Now I'm also, I'm not getting all of it out of this pump. There's a little there as you can see. So I actually probably will add a full three and a half to account for those little discrepancies of what I'm losing as I go here. Get that plug back on and tightened. I'll give you a torque spec for that. Okay, so now the level setting procedure, uh, it's a little bit tricky. So I've got the car level, got the engine running, and I've got my scanner reading the transmission fluid temperature. That's the tricky part, is trying to measure the fluid at the right temperature when the transmission is warm. So the target temperature we're looking for is 104 degrees Fahrenheit. So right now we're reading 78. So just for reference, so just for reference, it's 34 degrees outside. The car has been sitting all night. The whole car is 34 degrees. All the fluid was 34 degrees when I started. And I started a timer that can hopefully get you close using this procedure, even if you don't have a scan tool. Um, listen, none of it's gonna be exact if you don't have the scan tool. Um, however, for what it's worth, I've done this same kind of procedure on two or three other vehicles uh, in order to get it as close as I can. And we have not had any bad uh, symptoms. One was a Chrysler transmission. One was a GMC uh, Allison transmission and we got it as close as we could in the temperature range and the fluid level and never had any bad symptoms. Um, so I'm skeptical that you have to get these, you know, spot on exact with the temperatures and the fluid levels. So, and we've already added the same amount of fluid that we took out. So that's also going in our favor. But nevertheless, uh, in this video, I'll give you the amount of minutes it took to warm up this transmission starting at 35 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't know if that's going to help you, especially if you're not doing this in the, you know, fall or winter, but it'll at least give you some idea where to start from. Um, so, all right. Okay, so I just double checked the rating. It looks like a good temperature to be reading this at is 115 degrees Fahrenheit. So it took me about 15 minutes idling, starting at 35 degrees ambient temperature at 15 minutes. And when I use my non-contact thermometer on the pan, the pan is reading 100. So there's a little difference in the temperature. So you could do the same thing. You could start the car probably at any temperature and then read the transmission pan until it reads about 100 degrees. And then you'll know, as long as you're following the procedure and you're paying attention to it, you'll know that once the pan reaches 100, then the fluid inside uh, is the right temperature to be able to check the set. Okay, so right now, so the pan is warmed up a little bit more now, but 
depending on where you, t where you point the gun at. So that's how I've determined that's the right temperature. And now what we do, I've already loosened this a little bit. So you can just pull this. And remember that plastic pipe that's way up in there? That's gonna help us set this level. So any excess that I put in is gonna come out now. And there's really no excess. So now what I need to do is I need to come up here to that fill hole. and add some fluid to that fill hole until I see some of this coming out. So now that it started to trickle a little bit like that, as you can see, we're going to throw this plug back in. We're going to call that good. Okay, so I put, I crammed a lot of information as far as how to check this transmission into this video, how to check the level when you're done. Um, but what it boils down to is at the operating temperature of the transmission and engine or close to it, you need to make sure that the transmission is not overfilled. So you can use a few of those different suggestions, right? You can run the car, depending on the temperature you're starting at, your, your ambient temperature, you can run the car um, from a cold start, 10 to 15 minutes. You can check the transmission pan with your uh, non-contact thermometer, make sure that's around 100 degrees on the exterior. Um, after 10 to 15 minutes to make sure those two kind of correlate and then uh then you can pull that drain plug and see if you have any fluid that seeps out if you don't you should do like i did add a little bit more fluid until you have a little bit of fluid dripping out uh, that way you know that it's full and as it drips it'll start to slow down a little bit it'll trickle a little bit and then you know that you have the correct fluid level so like i said earlier in the video I don't think that this procedure has to be extremely precise. So if you've done everything that I did, you check the fluid that come out, um, run the car to the temperature or same close approximate temperature, add if you have to, you're gonna be fine. Um, there's some, you know, some of these projects nowadays on transmissions, I think people kind of get lost in the details and they're maybe too nervous to tackle it. But the reality is the more of these that I do and have good results with, I realize that it doesn't have to be extremely precise, like laboratory precision. Um, as long as you have enough transmission fluid in there and it's not grossly overfilled, you're going to be fine.